Bonds Payable Part 1 Issuance of Bonds at Interest Payment Dates But before we discuss how bonds are measured at interest payment date and its recording, let us first define what bond is. A bond is a contract of debt whereby one party called issuer borrows funds from another party called the investor. Ibig sabihin po noon that is a bond, it is also parang promissory note but this is more on a long term period. It is a contract wherein the issuer wanted to borrow funds from a particular investor and that investor will give certain funds okay, in a form of money to the particular issuer. Okay, Accounting for issuance of bonds. There are two approaches on recording or accounting for the issuance of bonds. We have the memorandum approach and the journal entry approach. The memorandum approach, there is no entry made upon authorization of the entity to issue bonds. Ibig sabihin, upon the authorization okay, given to the company that they can issue bonds, there is no entry to prepare a journal to be a journal entry to prepare instead a memorandum only and under memorandum approach the authorized bonds payable account account or the authorized bonds payable account title is not maintained while the journal entry approach is a journal there is a journal entry made upon authorization Ibig sabihin, upon authorizing the company to issue bonds, they will prepare a journal entry debiting um, an issued bonds and then credit to authorized bonds payable. Authorized bonds payable account title is maintained under journal entry approach. But as we go on on our discussion, the most common approach being used in the real world is the memorandum approach. So, we will focus on memorandum approach, okay, related to bonds payable accounting. Interest of bonds. Because bonds are contract of debt, so, ibig sabihin, there are interests attached to that particular contract. Usually, Interests related to bonds are payable semi-annually or in every six months. Usually lang. Pwede naman, interest can be paid okay, um, quarterly, annually. Pero, in most common cases, interest related to the bonds are paid semi-annually. Okay? Next, initial measurement of bonds. Ito na po, dito na po magkakaroon ng mga accounting issues. Okay, initial measurement of bonds. Bonds are initially measured at face value of the bonds. However, we need to add any premium if there is or deduct any discount. And considers transaction costs related to the issue ones of the bonds. Ibig pong sabihin, the initial measurement of the bonds composed of the face value of the bonds plus premium kung meron. Kung wala namang premium pero merong discount, ibawas po natin yung discount na yun. At we need to consider transaction cost. Ito po yung mga bond issue cost related to the issue ones of the bonds. Usually, okay, hindi naman po usually, kundi ito lang talaga ang dapat gawin according to accounting standard. Transaction cost related to the issue ones of bonds are deducted to the premium. Pag premium ang lumabas on the on the acquisition or sale of the particular bonds, hindi palang acquisition, kundi sale of the particular bonds, the transaction cost must be deducted to the selling price of the bond. Okay? Particularly, the premium of the bond. Pag discount naman yung lumabas upon 
sale of that particular bond, the transaction costs are being deducted to the discount. Oh, added pala. Are added to the discount to, to the discount of the bonds. To clearly illustrate that, okay, yung initial measurement, I prepare two different illustrative examples. First, an issue one of bonds at a discount at interest payment date. As of now, yung problem ko is issue one of bonds at interest payment date. Because, bukas, I will prepare a PowerPoint presentation related to the issue one of bonds on uh, between interest payment date. Kasi, paging, pag maging between interest payment date, there is another consideration that we need to to include. Okay. So, take note, ah, the, the illustrative example is about the issue one of bonds at, disc, at a discount at interest payment date. Ito at a discount to. Okay. On June 1, 2019, an entity sells 5 million face value of bonds at 97. Ibig sabihin, um, the 5 million was was sold at 97 for every bond. So, ibig sabihin, 97% is the selling price of the total face value of the bond. The bonds mature and pay 12% interest semi-annually on June 1 and December 1. Okay? So, the issuance of the bond is within the interest payment date. Bakit? Take note, the bonds mature and pay 12% interest semi-annually on June 1 and December 1. The the bonds were sold on June 1 and interest payment dates happened to be on the same date, June 1 then. So, okay. So, ibig sabihin na transaction is an issuance of bonds at a discount kasi mas mababa sa 100%. Okay. Yung acquisition, uh, yung selling price of the bonds, okay, which is 97 and then, a 15,000 pesos bond issue cost was incurred in the issuance of, issuance of the said bond to compute for the initial value of the bonds. Okay. 5 million, that's the face value. Multiply it by 97% kasi yung 97 dun sa taas na value or selling price of the bond, ibig sabihin po, 97% lang of the total face value yung ibabayad ng investor. So, yung ibinayad ng investor is 4,850,000. However, take note that the face value of the bond is 5 million. Ibig sabihin po nun, if we deduct 5 million to 4,850,000, the investor, okay, availed a discount of 150,000. Take note, we have a 15,000 bond issue cost. Sinabi ko kanina that the transaction cost is added to the discount of the bond. So, we need to add the 15,000 bond issue cost to the 150,000 to come up with the total discount amounting to 165,000 pesos. So, to prepare the journal entry related to this transaction, very simple. Well, our debit would be cash for 4,835. Bakit 4,835? In fact, yung in-invest naman is 4,850. Okay, nangyari po yun because 5 million minus the discount of 150 minus the bond issue cost of 15,000 lalabas, yung net cash na meron lang po tayo is 4,835. Take note, the total discount on the bonds is 165,000. The 165 is a composition of the discount on bonds payable na 150 plus the bond issue cost na 15,000. And then, credit to the face value of the bonds at 5 million pesos. How about naman if we issue the bonds at a premium on interest payment date? Okay, ganito. Issuance of bonds at a premium at interest payment date. With same facts, um, 
same facts related um same facts of the previous problem kaso the selling price of the bonds is at 107 ibig sabihin um beyond 100% yung cost of acquiring the bonds by the investor same bond issue cost same pa rin, no so to compute for the initial value of the bonds that would be 5 million multiplied by 107% so ibig sabihin yung ininvest ni investor for that said contract of debt is 5 million 350 less the 5 million face value meron po tayong excess that we will consider as premium on the bonds na amounting to 350,000 because this is a premium sabi ko the transaction cost related to the issuance of the bonds pag premium dapat ibawas sa premium ng bonds that's why 350 minus 15,000 the total premium related to the issuance Okay, of the bonds on interest payment date is 335,000 pesos only. So, to prepare the journal entry, we debit cash for 5,335,000. That is 5 million, that's the face value, plus an excess 7%, that is 350,000, minus the bond issue cost, of 15,000 so the total net cash proceeds from the issuance of the bonds is 5,335,000 credit bonds payable at its face amount which is 5 million then the premium on bonds payable at 335,000 alam po natin that the premium actual premium is 350 kaso naging net value na lang niya is 335 because we deduct the 15,000 bond issuance cost to the premium okay for so i hope you understand um the recording and computation of initial measurement of bonds on the date of interest payment for tonight for today ito lang po muna ang i-discuss ko okay and tomorrow just wait for a new discussion on bonds payable thank you and god bless po sa ating lahat